Welcome, everybody. It's so great to be with you again for the latest episode of Get on the Grid with Chessie Roberts. My guest tonight is Trixie Phelps. And she and I would like for you to join us in aligning with the energies of co-creation so that this show gives you the best information to your highest good and best outcome. Welcome, Trixie. I'm so glad to have you on the show. How are you? Well, I'm good. Thank you, Chelsea, for having me. I appreciate that. Well, I think it's going to be a really, really good show. And so for those of you who are not familiar with Trixie, she is a shamanic practitioner, a spiritual liaison, and soul accelerator. I love those those names that you have for what you do. Um, as a healer, mm-hmm. Trixie mends the body, the mind, and the spirit. She offers thorough sessions looking into the depths of all realms, multidimensionally, galactically, upper world, lower world, and middle world, including your life stream, your past lives, and your current life. She works on the core frequency level to help redesign and reprogram your soul imprint, materializing immediate and tangible results and opening your natural pathways in all areas of life. Since everything is energy, when we get emotional about something, it carries a certain frequency that Trixie is able to track. Emotions are a natural part of life, and when those emotions start controlling us, that's when we need to clean up the energy around them. Trixie utilizes her natural tools, talents, and skills to remove what doesn't belong so you can step into your own brilliance with ease and reach your highest healing potential with grace. Trixie, that sounds absolutely amazing, but I have to ask you, how did you get started doing all of this? Oh, the... uh... The story, it starts out, I suppose, a lot like most of us growing up. I had what I feel is very typical childhood. Um, I had an older brother, younger sister, so I was a middle kid. I was feeling like the odd man out, you know, um, joking around with my parents that I feel like I've um, been adopted. I just, the only one with the lighter hair, blue eyes, and fair skin. (laughs) Everybody (laughs) else had the darker hair and the tanner skin and the brown eyes. So we joked about that. But uh, my parents divorced, and then they both remarried, and we moved a bit. And, um, you know, growing up, there was um, typical teen stuff. You know, you get bored, and then in high school, you start, you know, doing your typical teen stuff and kind of going off track there, you know, in high school a little bit. But um, religious experiences were never really something that I connected with either. I felt like um, there was something more, something much more out there. Um, you know, and then in high school, I did have a child at 16, and I did summer school. I finished high school with my class. I even took another course in a vocational school, which is like a continuing ed program, and then moved out of state. So I feel like it's fairly typical, but there were little draws even then that I could feel there was something more going on. And then as a, um, at, at, actually in high school is when I met my husband, who I am still with now, about 25 years. We've got three children and two grandchildren. <laughs> and so wow. you have that, that um, wonderful experience now to look back on and stuff. But through that time, I can almost tell you, you know, look, it's always in hindsight, isn't it? 2020 is hindsight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that. So looking back, yeah, I can find different things that would have led me in the direction that I had now become where I'm at. So, I, you know, it could be any number of different things. I've all, you know, my mother tells a story when I almost died as an infant. I got pneumonia. I was in an oxygen tank. So maybe that was something that kind of directed me in a, in a path that, you know, I wasn't aware of, obviously, at that young of an age. And there was another incident yeah. where I was hit in the head with a goose. You know, I had a goose egg on my forehead from a rock. Just a, a bunch of different memories? other life experiences. Go ahead. Do you have any memories of connecting on the other side during any of this? You know, a lot of them were in dreams as I was younger. Uh, there were a lot of vivid dreams with details of people I knew or people I didn't know but felt like I knew. And they weren't all the time, but occasionally when they came in, they were very clear. Uh, I didn't understand how to interpret them, of course, at the time, you know, but they definitely were there. Other than that, around people, just having that gut instinct, that intuitional feeling of, oh, I don't care for these people there's something really creepy about that person <laughs> you know that, that help guide you away from harm's way when you listen right mm-hmm. my mother always said if you start to do something and you're in doubt don't do it 
And I have learned mm-hmm. over the years that that's your intuition screaming at you not to go that way or not to do that right now. So that's probably a good good way to look at it. Exactly. Do you recall, do you recall when you woke up, what, what made you wake up to what's really going on out there and start making all these fabulous connections that you have that you work with? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm pretty stubborn. <laughs> I often get teased. I often get teased in my family about how stubborn I am, and it's a family trait because there's a few of us that are that way. You know, and again, looking back in hindsight, I have to say the significant turn for me was probably a car accident I was at or had in 2003. I, did, I had shattered my ankle. And uh, it was a T-bone, the pickup truck that went through the intersection because you know, I had the right of way. But it was very severe, and that had me laid up for quite some time. And I just knew, you know, it was interesting because months before I had those sort of premonition feelings, something else was going to happen, something big was going to happen. I'm like, ah, no, no, I just dismissed it. I'm pretty stubborn, you know, ignoring it like we all do. <laughs> yeah. And then it would show, like, I'd get these visuals in my head, and I'd be like, oh, I could see myself laying on a bed with my leg up in the air in a cast. And I'm like, that's just ridiculous. And then I started, like, self-guessing, you know, and self-doubting, and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to manifest that. Stop thinking, stop thinking that, stop thinking that. (laughs) You know, and then I would dismiss it again. Well, there, lo and behold, that day, I mean, within the second of it happening, I knew that that was a warning that I was receiving prior to, and I just knew in that moment that that was what that was prep, prep, prepping me for that was coming up. And sure enough, I was in the hospital, my leg was in a cast, and then it, there was a lot of other surgeries involved. But that was probably my biggest one that really got me to start opening up a little more to what else is possibly out there because the message was very significant. I just thought I was, you know, thinking these horrible things that weren't so true, but in fact they were warning me. It's kind of funny, isn't it, how guidance will come in and and keep smacking you until you start paying attention. (laughs) Very true, very true. As I was reading through your bio before we started the show, you sure got beaten up a lot, uh, car accidents and broken (laughs) things and, and things like that. Yes. Why do you suppose you put yourself in that situation? Was it to get you where you are, do you reckon? You know, in hindsight, I, knowing what you know now. Yeah, true, yes. I do believe there are several of those incidences that were happening specifically to help put me back onto the right path. And because I was so stubborn about ignoring the messages and dismissing the information, then, of course, spirit or universe, that energy was still coming in. It's still saying, you've got to get on this path. It's important that you follow this direction. You have a lot of purpose to serve. You have a lot of, you know, um, healing aspects that we can have you utilize for. I just look back now and I see it, but of course at the time it wasn't that clear. And we did a lot of injuries and stuff. And now that I do what I do with the healing work of being a shamanic practitioner, I can see in several areas where there's been trauma um, in past lives even. Of course, I've had a lot of healing myself just so I could become clear and focused and available for the clients that I now serve. So I could tell you through those sessions, though, the trauma from past lives can stick with your soul imprints each time you get reincarnated. And not every single life will necessarily live or relive, rather, the injury or the trauma that you've experienced in past lives, but there are enough significant ones. I felt with all these car accidents I was in, these fender benders and, you know, these different things that I have been experiencing, once I learned a little more about the spiritual healing and the soul retrieval and soul loss and looking at that, I started taking classes and workshops and then I started having those areas healed. And once that was done, they, I've not had any car accidents since. No fender vendors, well, nothing. It is done. <laughs> well, what I'm what I'm getting from you as, as we're talking is we kind of set up these patterns for for our lessons through our lives. And if we don't get the lesson, maybe we relive those patterns in the next life so that we become aware? Or am Mm -hmm. I making it too simple or or am I off target? You know, I believe that's what it's been thought to be for quite some time now, and and maybe some levels is still very true. I honestly believe through all my teachings that it's this time, this round, we're all here right now. We're not necessarily here to re-experience any of those. 
anymore. It's done. All those experiences have been learned, and they are in our memory bank. They're in the Akashic Records. They're, they're there. This life, this time around, is an opportunity for all of us to clear our souls, to clear the trauma from those um, injuries or the soul imprint from our lineage uh, all the way back, you know, through the DNA that's been ingrained in us. Um, it's time to clear all of those, and that's the focus that we want to have now. Well, I have heard that our DNA is being changed to accommodate this mm-hmm. new ascension, this new um, earth that we're headed for. Is that part of all of this, do you think, or do you have a different take on it? No, I feel a resonance of truth in that for sure. The previous years and decades and centuries of being on the earth, our bodies were developed and programmed and, you know, set in a way that we could live and maintain lifestyles in that frequency. Of course, now you know it's the whole shift of the earth frequency is rising and the veils are thinning, which means our bodies will also have to adjust to that as well. So there are a lot of um, shifting that's happening within even our physical DNA. Well, the reason I ask that is I've noticed that I have got a lot of very strange, weird aches and pains. My body's not reacting like I'm used to it, reacting to certain foods and certain um, Mm -hmm. activities. Mm -hmm. I'm tired a lot of the time, and I don't mean just, just I need to take a nap. I mean I'm so weak it's hard to get up and motivate myself at all. And when these happen, I ask guidance, what are you guys doing? And they tell me it's the DNA change. It's the Mm -hmm. uh, expanding and raising of frequencies. Are these things in your purview? Do you understand what they're talking about? I'm not sure I get it, but uh, when they tell me that, I tell them, okay, either send me the strength to get through it or let me sleep through it one or the other. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, health is still a very important aspect of of the shift. In the course, you hear the stories, you hear people talking, you read the articles, it's everywhere now because people are starting to wake up to the fact that getting rid of the packaging and the processed foods is very, very critical. Not using the microwave is critical because it zaps all the nutrients from the food. You know, looking at your more natural, earth-grown, organic type of foods is what's really going to help your body with this shifting that's happening. And being tired could very well be related to some of that food stuff as well. I believe from also the clients that I've worked with, there are lots of other energies attached to each of us. All of us have it. It doesn't matter who you are. And those energies can often cause resistance and, um, you know, tiredness, those types of um, thoughts that say, oh, you're just overweight, or oh, I'm no good, or oh, you're not going to go anywhere, or, oh, you're just right wasting your time, or oh, you know, they just have all those negative in- invitations to them. So those, once they're removed, and which we do with the sessions that I provide, that often clears the space for the client to be able to see what they need to do next for themselves. So yeah, there's a lot of changing going on. Well, I have this discovered uh, low these many years I've been working in this particular field that mm-hmm. any time I keep having an occurrence, whether it's a dream, whether it is a pattern of activity like your automobile racks, or mm-hmm. uh, whether it is a change in something that has become comfortable, I'm immediately alerted to the fact there's a new lesson there that I'm not quite seeing. And mm-hmm. when I ask guidance about it, they they usually clear it up for me, but sometimes they don't. Sometimes I have to muck around a bit to figure it out. But mm-hmm. I think that as, as we clean this stuff up and as we come into vibration with these newer frequencies, we do get mm-hmm. the lessons a little faster, don't we? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Things are turning and happening almost in the blink of an eye, really. It's can continue to get a little faster as well. So there's a good opportunity for people to realize or become a little more aware and conscious of what they're feeling and, you know, maybe what they're sensing or seeing. And uh, Because we all have the gifts. We all have the gifts to be able to, to bring in and find that information. It's just a matter of tapping into it. So with the frequencies 
raising and the veils are thinning, it definitely gives everybody that opportunity to shed any of those heavy energies or, you know, resistance or those patterns, like you said, and start moving into a clearer direction. Could you give our listeners some pointers as to what is what is happening in their lives? Like if they start seeing something or feeling something, could that maybe alert them to uh, a lesson or a or a way to mm-hmm. come around and change things for their best betterment? Mm-hmm. Can't talk this morning. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I have your question figured out. Um, yeah. If you're feeling, you know, the any of those negative energies, they're definitely not you. They're not who you really are because we all come from creator. We are creator incarnate. We have that light within us. It's in your core. It's been kind of dimmed down over the decades and the centuries and all the past lives. But again, as I mentioned earlier, this this life, this is your opportunity to get rid of those and clear them out. And I know fear is one of the big ones that hold a lot of people back and thinking so many other things. Oh, it's, it's, you know, fear will keep me back. I've even had clients that will schedule their appointments and then out of fear will cancel that. Well, it's not uncommon. I do see that. It's oftentimes not who, who's doing them, who's doing it. It's, it's another entity. So entities are one of the many energies that can be attached to somebody and it will have them second guessing and then maybe rescheduling or canceling the appointment. So we look at that right away when they mention it and then as soon as we do, they're like, oh, my gosh, I'm so glad you did that. I can't believe I didn't do this sooner. <laughs> it's, it's a little scary at first to address any of those issues you have or concerns you have. Um, it, it, it's allergies. It could be um, um, addictions. It could be that, you know, you hear the story about women often say, I don't know why I'm always attracting the wrong kind of guy, but I just always seem to pick up the wrong one. <laughs> it's a It's a pattern in there you know, soul signature. It's a pattern in their past lives of something that has happened. And it could be a trauma specifically, but it could also be, you know, curses and oaths. And it could be a whole number of different things that we look at because it's a very deep, deep process. It's a very multidimensional kind of access that we do in gathering all of the information that could be correlated to whatever they're feeling. So just know, just know that if it's Feeling heavy or resistant or scary, really, the sooner you can look at it, the sooner we can, you know, clear it, the better you will feel, much better. One of the things I've also discovered as I've been working through all of this sort of thing is a lot of times you don't recognize your hesitation as a uh, Mm fear-based emotion. Uh, Fear hides behind a lot of different names oh, I don't care for this, or uh, I'm not comfortable doing this, or something something just tells me I shouldn't do that. And we sort of take that as part of our guidance, and it isn't really. It's this, what you were just talking about, this whatever mm-hmm. it is that's holding you back from doing whatever it is you're doing. So mm-hmm. start, I would say, start really examining your motives for what you're doing, and if if you get that twinge in your tummy that tells you you're afraid, pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I think our ego jumps up and stops us because Mm -hmm. the ego is so easily programmed and it's so hard to not listen to because we've been listening to it for years and years and years. And uh, if you can tell your ego, you know, yes, I love you very much and I know you're trying to help me, but I need you to sit down and be quiet right now so I can hear higher guidance. That's also Mm -hmm. helpful, do you think? Well, it's very helpful. Um, the ego itself are those entities that I was referring to. It's the negative, anything negative, and that's what ego is, everything negative. And it can be removed and it can be taken out so that you are able to connect more clear with source or spirit in a way that it feels comfortable. And it's all done in a good way. There's nothing that's ever done, you know, in harm with this work. It's you're right that if you're feeling that information in your gut, the the good key to remember is if you have a strong emotion or if you feel fear around it, then you know it's not you. You know it's not really going to be your intuition because your intuition will come more from your core and it's going to feel more like a, 
like a friend who could be warning you in saying, oh, this isn't going to be, a, you know, good thing for you, <laughs> you know, or stay yeah. away from that person or, you know, maybe that food is going to upset your stomach because your body is talking to you. It's going to feel more like a friend with you rather than a fear. So that's a key thing to kind of remember when you're trying to decipher between them. That's good information. Thank you very much. You mentioned something mm -hmm. about these things being multidimensional. And um, mm -hmm. not too long ago, I did a program where I did a guided meditation that I was channeling from Archangel Michael. And I got this multidimensional thing really handed to me in a real-world way as I went through this. Um, it was a karma-clearing, cleansing, letting go uh, meditation. And we do hold a lot of stuff that we aren't even aware of. And you mm -hmm. mentioned oaths and things like that. And they do weigh on us, even though we had them in a, in, a, in a past life or we wore the chains of slavery or the crown of a king. It's all heavy-duty stuff, and we do need to let it go, do we not? Yes, we're never, never likely to remove everything, especially during this lifetime, but the goal here is to get those things that are sort of surfacing the ones that are always up in your face or the ones that are always currently repeating or blocking you or resisting you. And the more you clear, of course, the, the more your soul is going to be able to accelerate, the more you'll be able to, you know, move into the evolution. And it helps tremendously um, to be able to work on those things for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I've noticed that as I clear one layer of gunk, <laughs> another one comes yeah. to the surface. <laughs> Some people call it peeling an onion, and that's kind of like it yes. as you were talking. I was getting this um, toxic stuff floating to the top of the water, and once you clear it off, here comes some more. And it's, it feels mm. like a never-ending cycle, but there is an end to it some way, isn't there? Yeah, I, I often tell my clients to just trust their knowing. I mean, again, there are multiple layers, as you described, and multiple. I often use the tissue box as an example rather than the onion peeling. <laughs> yeah. You pull the top tissue out, and then that's like your top layer. So once you've pulled that top tissue out, you've got another one that pops right up. Those are your other layers. So, you, yeah, we may never completely clear everything, and that's okay. What we want to do, though, is find where your comfort is, where we can remove enough of those layers in order for you to feel at peace and content and clear and focused and happy because we want to bring you back to your original state of who you really are with a lot of love. And that's, that's the goal. So everybody's going to be a little different. Some people may only need a few sessions and, and they're fine or, you know, maybe they think they're fine now. We all have the layers, but again, I encourage you to trust your knowing when you feel and recognize those patterns happening or those negative energies or those voices and then look into, you know, finding somebody that can help you clear those out because it's a world of difference just to have, have that done. So you get to a point where you can focus more clearly. People have financial issues, and that resistance could be past life related. It could be a current life thing. Oftentimes, everything we have experiencing this round is from something in our past lives. And when we work with the work that I provide is, is done in a way that we look multidimensionally, as I mentioned. We go, the, the information is collected both galactically and from the earth. It's collected from uh, all kinds of different frequencies. It's collected through past lives. I look at the life stream. And again, the point is though going to the root. Once I get to the root of the cause and heal what's needed to be healed there and resolve and bring back soul parts and do what's necessary at that level, then the person is able to move forward with their life in a way that they feel relieved and, and happy again. And that's really the goal. So for everyone, it'll be a little different. You know, there's severity of, of trauma. Some, again, like I said, a few others could take, you know, years. It just, just depends on the person. Right. Well, everybody's path is different in that it's mm -hmm. exactly the same, just completely and totally different, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had one of my clients say that to me uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's exactly the same as everybody else's and completely and totally different. And you're absolutely right. Because we all go through the same stuff, we just do it in a different way. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's the way it's supposed to work. I had a spontaneous soul retrieval during a meditation one time. Scared the mess mm -hmm. out of me. 
<laughs> but after it was over, I felt like my Rubik's Cube was all lined up, you know? Um, yeah, I had yes. gone, I had gone into a deep meditation, and one of my animal totems had come to me, which is very rare. They They hardly ever talk to me anymore. And he informed me that I was needed at a certain area in my uh, meditative state. So I went to the area, and there was a huge golden eagle standing there waiting for me to get on his back. So I climbed up on his back, and I can still remember how his feathers felt, you know, when I sat on him and when I held on to his neck and everything. And he took off, and we're flying. And we're flying and flying and flying, and I'm wondering, what's all this about? And I ask him, and he just kind of says, wait for it. So I do. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, these shards of something, I took it to be ice, started coming at me. It was like flying into daggers. And it was cold. It was painful. It was unpleasant. But the eagle said I needed to continue. So I trusted guidance and continued. And all of a sudden, uh there was this big, ugly storm in front of us. And I asked the eagle if we had to fly through that, and he said, yes, something very important is in there for you. And so I said, well, okay. And at the time, I had no idea what was going on. This didn't, Mm -hmm. what it was, didn't come to me until afterwards. And we flew into this dark cloud, and all of a sudden, there was this skeleton, a mana skull, coming at me. And it was Blanche white, and it had really red, scary-looking eyes, and it slammed into me and knocked me off of the eagle, and I went tumbling, 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 and the eagle circled around and caught me before I hit the ground. Thank you, eagle. And um, (laughs) brought me back to our starting place. And when I got through shaking and wondering what in the world I had just gone through, I realized that it was a soul retrieval, all those shards and pieces. I haven't quite Mm -hmm. nailed down exactly what the skull was, but uh, apparently it was very important because after it was over, and this was several days later, um, it came to me that I didn't feel, I guess the word is segmented anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that totally Um, makes sense. Uh, the shards are aspects of your soul, little essences and aspects. And oftentimes we, we as humans, and, and there is no right or wrong in what we've ever done. We just didn't know. Now we're becoming more aware. We're waking up. And so now we're going to be able to be more conscious about stuff. But we often can project our energy onto other people. So then we're giving away that energy when we do that. So we're taking little parts of our soul and, and they're getting scattered. It also works in the reverse of that where other people will come, you know, when they're around you and take parts of you. They hold on to parts of you or, you know, it's not intentional. And I know it sounds a little strange perhaps, but it just, it's little pieces or little aspects of, of, of you that they've taken. And then, of course, you also lose the actual soul parts or just parts of your soul because of trauma. Those parts of you become afraid. And they, they want to go and hide. So these pieces are gone in these different realms or different um, worlds is where, like what you just described, actually quite similar. And they stay gone until we know we can go in and collect them and bring them back. Thankfully, there are those occasions, like you've described, where you're able to just go in with that dream or a meditation and have some of those come back all on their own and that's wonderful when that happens it's wonderful <laughs> but if it's not if it's not happening fast enough of course or it's not happening enough then you definitely want to see seek out somebody that can help you do that because that's one of the features of my session too is as I create in in the frequency world that lighthouse beam and I've got that frequency of the lighthouse in the 360 degrees set to the soul that I'm working on, so whoever my client is, and that way I can call in and I'm asking for all those soul aspects and soul essences and any other soul parts that want to present other than the ones I'm going to go hunt down. (laughs) And then we bring them in, and the client definitely has more of their soul, more of who they are back on board, and it does leave you feeling more complete and not as scattered, also giving you, you know, that more clarity of, of being able to look at what you want to do and where you're going with your life. Absolutely, and I would ask, tell the listeners that this is an absolutely wonderful uh, thing to go through because before this happened to me, I 
was completely unaware of how fragmented and, and scattered I was feeling. And a lot of my clients who come to me now will say, gosh, I'm just all over the place. Um, I'm, I'm here, I'm there, I'm upset, I'm, I'm happy, I'm this, I'm that, I'm the other. And mm-hmm. I believe mm-hmm. that once we, <laughs> pardon the pun, ladies and gentlemen, but once we pull ourselves together on a soul level, <laughs> We have a lot, we have a lot more strength to be able to handle this other stuff. Absolutely, so absolutely. If, if you can uh, have a session with Trixie, I think you'll find it well to your highest good and best outcome to to collect yourself, to get yourself <laughs> all in one sock, if you will. <laughs> like I said before, um, this was this was a spontaneous thing for me, and whether I have completed everything I needed to reconnect with or not, um, I probably haven't because I'm still here. But the thing is, the difference that it made in everything that followed afterwards was just unbelievably huge. Mm -hmm. It does. It changes the majority of your perspective and your your outcome and the direction you were going. That's the point, though. We we want to move you out of the direction you've been in. You know, the people are currently on that that bumpy road and we want to put you on this clear path we want to put you on a smooth path we want you to find what you're here to really do or you know who you're here to really help or of course doing that in order to even help yourself you've got to clear these out and that's what we're here for there's just not enough of us out there because the goal again as I mentioned earlier is to get people to a point where they can see and find who they really are it's it's an amazing process it truly is, and I think as more and more of us do wake up to what is actually happening, as we do wake up to who we really are, as we do mm-hmm. connect with these higher and, and wider frequencies, we do mm-hmm. start to see different perspectives. And one of my big things is, you know, change your perspective, change your life. And um, I believe that with everything I've got. But once you mm-hmm. can change, even if even if it's just a one little thing today, Mm-hmm. that gives you a better perspective, that gives you a better look at who you are and where you're going, you're well on your way. Absolutely. I could even, uh, I'll share a couple of my own personal stories. As I mentioned earlier in, yeah. the, in the conference that we, I had uh, become a young mother at the age of 16. And, and, of course, as a young mother, I was very worried. I'm not enough money. Am I going to be a good mother? There was all these you know, fear conversations happening in my head. Not that I knew what they were at the time, but of course now that I've um, found that direction of spiritual healing, I was able to have somebody help me look at that because some things we, like you mentioned with your experience, may be able to do on our own, but other things, especially when they're our own emotions, those emotions often cloud the vision of what it is or the knowing of what we need to do. So having somebody you can go to is very important in getting past a lot of those. Uh, it's almost Absolutely, impossible. I mean, it's like yeah. a surgeon, you know, a surgeon doing his own surgery, really. No, no. You, <laughs> you want to find another reliable surgeon to do it for you, so to speak. So there are some things, and I encourage if it's working for you to, to continue doing it. But if not, find somebody that does, um, because once these things are cleared, you are definitely moving on a better path. And You know, the other one we mentioned earlier was all the car accidents I had. And, of course, I finally got to a point where I had somebody look at that. Well, now now I don't have a fear of other people in my car because that was also a very key. It wasn't just having the accidents. It wasn't just worrying about other drivers. It was also within having people in my car. That was huge for me, you know, outside of my children and my immediate family. I didn't realize how bad it was until I... Yeah, right. Well, I was good. I was very cautious. I was probably so tense, you know, my knuckles were white and I was sweating, <laughs> you know, because yeah. it was just a fear, you know, and it really came to front when I started van pooling for a company and I used to work at and we van pooled. Well, there were groups of people I didn't really know very well in the van and I'm like, I, 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 you know, I'm stuttering and I can't do this and I'm sweating and I'm clammy. <laughs> so finally I got in and took care of that. Now I have no issues at all and I'm totally happy to drive a crowd of people. It doesn't have any holdbacks whatsoever. So it's really a phenomenal process. Another one is fear of public speaking, which is common for a lot of people, too. I, my knees would knock. I would get sweaty. I thought I was going to, you know, pass out. My, I had tunnel vision. 
you know, those typical symptoms of having a fear around something. And through several sessions for, for me that I was able to get past that and now I'm more comfortably able to go out and do public speaking. So there there let is some, a, let me ask you something mm-hmm. here, Trixie. You're talking about letting go of the fear and, and kind of doing it anyway. What would you say around something that makes you so uncomfortable that you've become physically ill? Should you consider mm-hmm. pushing on through that? Or do you need to step back and let that go for now? If it's that severe for someone, I would recommend having having a session. I would recommend working with somebody to get past it because a lot of the spiritual, emotional, mental illnesses that we experience have been there too long and in most cases are, <clears throat> excuse me, manifesting physically into a lot of the ailments and the dis-ease and things that we're feeling So having spiritual clearings and spiritual healings will definitely aid and assist in your physical healing. That makes perfect sense to me. I think Mm -hmm. everybody should schedule a session with you. (laughs) Keep you busy for the next 200 years. (laughs) Well, everything is energy, right? Everything is energy. I mean, even our tables, our chairs, our desks, our cars, it doesn't matter, right? Everything is energy. So if what we're experiencing in our physical is a, in relation to energy, of course, which it is, oftentimes will connect with your spiritual, emotional, and mental, both in this realm as well as past lives and all those other aspects that I spoke about earlier. So by healing that, and we talked about the DNA connection and the soul imprint and those types of things of the body. So absolutely, if they're working on even spiritual aspects that are related to physical, they are still going to have a win. It will be a win-win no matter what. Mm-hmm. Can you um, tell us about any of the things that you do without giving away the store that would encourage people maybe to look into this a little deeper? I know we've kind of talked all the way around it, but any anything specific or pointed that you could head us in the direction of? Are you referring to like um, like client experiences, the types of, of- of things that I've worked with with clients. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have several. Sure, I could give you a few. I have one client who came in with uh, significant cat allergies, and that's pretty common for a lot of people. So he carried around an inhaler, and it didn't. It wasn't an everyday thing. It was, and you know, it was significant enough that even people who owned cats, that he was around them because of the dander or the hair or whatever, all over their clothes or coats or whatever that be, he'd come home. I guess, wheezing and wheezing and just having a heck of a time breathing because I had used his inhaler. Well, with a session, when we looked into it, I was drawn back directly to a past life when he appeared to be about the age of 10, and there seemed to be a farm life where he lived. This is what was presenting to me in that um, session where he walked up to this big, I don't know, some kind of a cover they had on the field. It was like a barn-type structure only small, so he could actually reach the top of it. And there were several cats, you know, those feral cats that are out on the farm or in the meadows. And I guess when he reached up for the cat, of course, this again is what's presenting to me, that cat attacked him. It was very vicious, very mean. But for him, that was very traumatic. That was very um, disheartening. And, of course, he was scared, scared of cats. He doesn't care for them, you know, and, and it's all because of this past life. This was the origination of what had happened that caused – for him to, you know, have these allergies. So with that healing and bringing back that soul part that was scared and had lived that trauma, he was now he is now able to be around people, even the cats themselves, without the trigger anymore. So it's huge, huge for him. And uh, I see many cases like that. Um, another woman came in with work anxieties, you know, feeling unappreciated and not being heard. We worked with those past life traumas of, of what had happened and caused that. And with those healings and her soul part and, you know, aspects and essences back on board with her, she now has more confidence of who she is and what she's doing at work. And she sees that it's not really all within her. You know, sometimes it's other people's damage and trauma that's coming out as well. And so she's able to deal with the situation more professionally. You know, there's, um, Depression, I had a woman come in with depression, so feelings of, of that no one understands, the feelings of being yeah. alone, 
um, tied back to another past life. There are uh, other entities that contribute to that because once we experience a trauma in our soul frequency or you could say your aura, you know, the energy of, of who you are, it causes a, a lower frequency that's damaged within that. And when that happens, other entities and other energies will come in and say, ooh, I know that trauma, I know that. And so they resonate and they attach. And when they do that, and they're the ones that contribute to those emotions that we, you know, those clients and we often feel about being alone or feeling depressed or, you know, the PTSD and the anger and the anxieties. These are other energies that are contributing to that. So we clear those away. We heal the trauma. These these are permanent results. So I've had lots of successful clients uh, walk away relieved with what we've been able to do in a session. Those are some of the common ones I've experienced. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm wondering if I'm understanding that some of this trauma stuff that we are holding on to is fed by the people around us whose damage recognizes ours. Is that what you were saying? Yes, absolutely, yeah. If we've got damage, whether we have mother issues or father issues or, like I mentioned, those other um, anxieties and anger, those issues, other people, maybe they don't know it. We don't know it. We've probably even done it ourselves at some point in time. We're no exception. But becoming more aware of, of that helps keep keep us in our own body so we're not projecting on others like that. But definitely they, that frequency draws to each other because you even in a positive way really you've ever you know run into somebody or met somebody you're like I know you somehow I feel like we know each other so well (laughs) (laughs) it's a frequency it's a frequency resonance that you probably have on some level across paths but it also works in the opposite when there's that trauma too so if there's that that frequency that's happened they resonate with it on some level I had a woman at at a previous job that I worked with who just continuously seemed to badger me. She'd snap at me and blow up over little details, and I just couldn't figure it out. I'm like, I don't understand. Well, after having a session, there were some definite um, traumas and, and damage from mother issues. You know, that's common. We all have some kind of level, most of us do, of, of those issues with our mothers. And my mother's wonderful. I get along very well with her now. But I had no idea from any of those previous issues growing up, you know, or the damage that was caused. But that was how this woman, and she didn't know either, you know, would, would attack at me. So with sessions, of course, in the healings, she actually quit bothering me, and we would talk. It was actually more decent conversations, more civilized. <laughs> we still kept our distance of the minimal between us, but, uh, you know, it was definitely far better and just amazes me to look back and say, that's what it was. All I had to do was go to some sessions and heal this stuff, and then <laughs> she left me alone. Things were getting better, and it was just very interesting. So those are some good examples I had a sure. similar. I had a similar experience also. Um, someone – extended family member didn't Mm -hmm. hear from me and uh, Mm -hmm. he would attack every time we were together and I kept wondering what was going on and I did a past life regression around the topic and found out that I had murdered her in a past life I thought well no wonder she doesn't (laughs) resonate with being close to me now the, the thing is that she would not do that the past mm-hmm. life thing, so she doesn't understand. She just knows she's uncomfortable mm-hmm. around me. But it gave me the empathy to be able to be in the same room with her without wanting to take her head off because I understood where it was coming <laughs> from, even if she didn't. So it is very healing. It is it's very true. hard. It yeah. does open your eyes and give you a new perspective on a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> it's true. That's very true. Oh, you had said something that made me think of another example to speak with, and of course it just totally left my mind. Um, oh, the healing, yeah. Because so she's not open to the open to the um, healing side of things, maybe the spiritual aspect, and not everybody is. So we're not judging. It's okay. When I'm working with a client and they have, like you say, with this other relative or a coworker, the connection. When we're clearing up your energy 
then we're also clearing up any attachments or any um, connections or cords that the other person has with you as well. So on a minimal level, they may feel some kind of a shift or they may notice a little bit of a change, but again, it'll be fairly subtle because I'm not working on them specifically as much as what we're clearing on you actually has a residual effect on how they had been interacting. So in some cases, there will be a little bit of shift, which even that in itself is, could be huge for that person. You know, that may be enough for them to look at their, their path and say, wait a minute, now maybe I should open my mind up a little more. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's subtle, oh, but yeah, it might be all they the need. Pond thing. <laughs> yeah. When you throw the pebble in, you, the ripples go out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it ripples off. On the edge and further. come back to you, and they come back different. Yeah, yeah, perfect. I think it's... It's fascinating to me at the complexity of humanity. And it's all <laughs> self-created. Even all the stuff from the past lives and all of that, if we if we could just remember why we're here when we get here, we wouldn't create so much uh, trauma for ourselves. But in our infinite wisdom as human beings, the, the uh, enlightened species, <laughs> we sure do create a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Stuff, don't we? <laughs> yes, yes. A lot of the beliefs and programming have been there for so, so, so long, and having these specific structures of what you can and cannot do is just so not true anymore. Maybe in the old paradigm, but it's definitely not relevant now in the new paradigm. Are you hear and you see of people talking about finding their passion and doing what they love and, you know, they break free from the corporate world and they're finding, you know, outdoor activities or adventures in life. And, you know, those are definitely more along your uh, experience of this life as well as what I was saying earlier about clearing. This is your opportunity. This is your time to clear those things now so you don't relive them, so you don't have to, because you don't. You've been there and you've done that. It's time to end this. It's (laughs) time to find your real passion and what you enjoy. Yeah, yeah, and there's changes, so many changes happening. No one really knows the future for sure, but you go with what feels right right now. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things I've discovered as I've done all this clearing and cleaning and like I've said before in the in the program, I'm not done, I'm sure, but every mm-hmm. time one of these events happens and it pulls me back to myself and reconnects me to my higher self, which is what I am anyway, the clarity mm-hmm. that comes with that just amazes me. And mm-hmm. the ability to reconnect with nature amps that like nobody's business. And so I think the mm-hmm. shamanic aspect of this is very crucial. And I don't it know that it's one everybody looks at. You know, they think, mm-hmm. well, we're going to clear this and we're going to heal that and we're going to do this, that, and the other. But uh, going out and hugging a tree or sitting with your feet on the ground just amazes me at the uh, healing and clarity that that in, in and of itself brings to everything. Well, I totally agree. There's... Um the frequency when you walk out in nature is often going to reflect what you need at that given in time. So, you know, you could see the mountains or you could see the creek or the river, or the lake, the ocean, or wherever you, you enjoy being, in even the desert for those who enjoy that. Being outside and in nature isn't just that. It's so much more because you do. You connect energetically and the frequency, the response that the – you know, earth or the the heavens or any of that energy is coming back to you by being out there is reflective specifically to you or who you are and what you're doing. And it changes every time you go out. It's it's a reflection and it bounces back and it provides for you what you need at that time. So being outdoors is, is actually quite healing in many aspects. I find myself, because I do so much uh, work on writing and, and doing the radio show and all that, I find myself inside a lot. And every once in a while, the light dawns, you need to go outdoors. So I just have to shut everything <laughs> down, walk away, and go stand in the yard for a little while if I don't do anything else. But the um, 
the fact that science is catching up to this information just tickles the life out of me because they've discovered mm-hmm. that, oh, my gosh, it helps your blood pressure. It lowers stress. It, uh, right. it changes your blood chemistry. It does all of mm-hmm. these wonderful, wonderful things that have been going on for millennia, but we have become so detached from nature because of mm-hmm. our, uh, 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 what's my word I want, uh, industrialized life, I suppose, mm-hmm. call it. Right. This, this new this new reconnection to nature is uh, what do they say? It's the best Wi-Fi connection out there. <laughs> yes, yeah, I could. <laughs> my husband's very fond of saying, "Here we stand on the cutting edge of ancient wisdom," and it's true. You know, our ancestors knew it, and we've lost it. So remembering it and coming back mm-hmm. to it is a good thing. Yes, I agree. I agree. Oh, goodness. Our time is just about up, um, Trixie. I really appreciate the fact that you've been able to be on the show with me. I I think our listeners have gleaned a lot of good information. I will post all of Trixie's connections, contact information on the program when I get it out there published, and I will let everybody know when it's and where it is. But I want to thank all of you for joining me for the show. And before I let you go, uh, Trixie, and don't hang up when we're done here because I, I need to do a little housekeeping with you afterwards. But do you mm-hmm. have a salient point that you would like for everyone to take away with them uh, from the program? If they don't remember anything else we talked about, just one important point. If I had the one, I'd say trust your knowing. It will be the best teacher you'll ever have. Whether you work with yourself or you work with anyone else, it's trust your knowing. That's absolutely your best guidance. That That's a huge piece of information right there. I agree. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I, I, will, I will commiserate with those of you who are saying, but it's so challenging. And it is, mm-hmm. but once you get, get the hang of it, it's just invaluable. Very invaluable. I agree. And I appreciate you uh, uh, having me as a guest today. I thank you for that opportunity to share this information and my stories. Well, thank you very much. I think that as more and more people start to look around and cast about for answers and start to seek their own awakening, um, shows like this one are very helpful because it gives the listeners and the seekers and the people who are, no matter whether you're new at it or been doing it for a long time, it gives you a new perspective mm-hmm. on things, and I really like that. So thank you for your interest. Mm-hmm. Thank all of you for joining us for the show tonight. And if you'd like to send in a question or a suggestion for a topic you would like covered on the show, please send your question, your suggestion, or your request to me at chessie at chessieroberts.com. You can find all of my information at chessieroberts.com. And all of my uh, services and stuff are now by donation, so you don't have to worry about your budget. Just do what you can do, and, and we'll make it work for you. My music is at archersmeadow.com. You've heard uh, snippets of it at the beginning and the end of the show. And that is from, um, gosh, Honeysuckle and You or Wildflower Mornings? Oh, my my producer's telling me it's from Honeysuckle and You, and that's on our first CD, right? So you can find that there. If you want to hear the rest of the song, please go and take a listen and take yours home. You can also find my book about my awakening and how frequencies, which is very apropos to this particular conversation, how frequencies had raised me from an uh, unaware person up to where I am now. And it's kind of a, a guideline. It's also about how the crystal grid works. So if you're interested, go to Amazon.com, type in my name, and my book will come up. So thank you for listening. Come back anytime to hear Get on the Grid with Tessie Roberts. Have a great week and bright blessings. Bye-bye.